actors had to do four pictures. That was their deal. They had to get four God. pictures on. And they get 12 weeks off and for the rest on. You know? They were extremely productive. Yeah. For 50 pictures a year. God. I know I'd worked on, the first time I was there, I worked on four pictures. You know, as an assistant. I don't know how we, when I was, then a six day week. I tell you, you go home on night, you're so tired on Saturday night. I mean, yeah, Saturday night and, and Monday and sa Sunday is your only resting period, and by the next time you know it, you're back on the set. It's uh, it was a year that uh, the presidential race was on in New York City, and uh, the pre uh, my father, who was a gambler, had told me to bet all the money I, I could on on uh, what was it? What was the president then? Uh, Dewey. Dewey and uh, Truman. Truman, right? Truman. Truman. Uh, all the money I had on, on Dewey because he was going to kill Truman. So I, I, I had flown to New York because I was asking him to lend me some money to do my first independent picture. And he said, no, I won't lend it to you, but uh, this friend of mine who was a big gambler, if you go see him, he'll loan you right away. He's my buddy. So I went to New York and went to dinner at night with him. We were all we were a big winner. Well, as you know, they had the wrong thing on the newspaper who won, but the next morning we found out that my father lost, I lost, and this guy lost. And he, he said, I, 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 he couldn't get out of bed from that. He lost a fortune. Anyway, so I went back to Los Angeles, blue. My father, who had been ill at that time, and, uh, and all of a sudden, I get a call by him at a dinner party, your father's died. He's dead, he's gone. I said, can't be, I just, and I ran home, and I found, you know, there's my father, who was the greatest thing ever happened to me, the way he treated me. And, and I, I went, I went to home that night, and the studio I was working with went bankrupt. My father dies, the studio is bankrupt. I have no job, and I just know where I have two children, and we just we got our own little house with a, nothing, nothing little house, but we didn't own that with payments. And I said, Oh my God, what am I going to do? Christmas comes, the kids get their presents, of course. First of the New Year comes, and I get a phone call from an executive at MGM. He said, you don't know me, but I know you, and I've heard very good things about you, that you're a very good assistant director. And MGM, most of our assistant directors have been there so long, that they sit out of, they sit in their rear end all day, and whatever the director, the actors, they, they don't pay attention. He said, uh, so uh, we'd like to have you come here and work for us. And I, I said, but I don't, I don't work for scale. And he said, if you work here, you work for scale. <laughs> I was glad to work at anything. And I went in there and I, uh, I met the people there and they were very nice to me. Well, I had an own little office to work in and write down your notes on how to do the picture and all that stuff. And Border Incident was the first picture I worked on. It was, uh, Tony Mann was the director. He was one of the great directors of those days. And I had been his direct assistant before, so it was a great team we had. We made the picture and it worked very well. We had a big rap party after the picture. We, but actually, the picture we did, we did it way in Arizona, way out of everywhere. And uh, the party's there, and everybody's around saying, you know, how they lied to you. Did great, you're wonderful. And uh, the head guy at the studio there came up to me. He said, "I'm very proud of you for the first time at Paramount. You're very good. Wish you well." He said, "Well, good. I'm, I'll, I hope I can work here another day." And I started walking. He said, "Where are you going?" I said, "I'm going home." He said, "Well, no, you're going to spend the rest of your life here." Brum, you know. Boy, of course I cried, and of course I went home. I couldn't wait to get my wife on the phone. She cried. One of the actors was a great dancer in the days of the early days of, of movies, and he became a, a very important man in the, in the in the government of California. And they would come and the Murphy, other, other George Murphy. You got it, Murphy. He's right on the money. He and uh, Montalban. Uh, Ricardo Montalban. They played the two characters. Jesus. And direction. And what was the next picture you made? After that was East Side, West Side, New York. And then another one. Uh, and who was in that? Uh, Mervyn Leroy directed it. There was a big cast in it. All the people I told you, I like Lana, uh, Ava, and uh, the, uh, Ava, who's it? The one I told you I'm crazy about, she, and one other, oh, Sid Charisse. And it was interesting watching Mervyn Leroy, who was an old time director, how he would do a scene. He'd, he'd have a cigar, and he'd get the actors in position to have a rehearsal, and then he'd say, Roland, and he'd step out in front of the camera so 
the rushes they could see him and then they say let's have a nice scene and he'd back up and the scene would go and he didn't pay any attention really to the scene because <laughs> you know with those pretty good actresses and actors uh, and it was a great experience and we, we shot that was part of New York and the rest were in Los Angeles I mean in the studio and the rest was shot in New York tie up shots of going th to different places there and I did a picture with Mickey called uh, <coughs> uh, called uh, called uh, the, 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 the last mile and Mickey was in that and when we came home we got gotten along so well he said why don't you do they want me to do the return of my character why don't you do it so that's how I got into that and I what did that what was he like in those days Mickey crazy absolutely crazy still is he's still, he's still he's crazy I read in the paper that he was bankrupt now I read it yesterday, but he wasn't gonna. He's gonna fight it, and he made an awful lot of money. But he was a gambler. Yeah. What was he like though at MGM? I mean, when yeah, every, when you were when you were on the MGM lot, um, can you tell me like what was it like in the commissary? Were were Mickey Rooney and Judy Garland like the biggest people on the lot, or was it Elizabeth uh, Taylor's uh, mother? Well, Liz, I didn't see, but in the dining room, they were all there. Every one of them, any star you mentioned was went in and out through there. And then you know the, the great shot where they had big more stars than they are in heaven. That one shot they made them. The whole everybody. It was when even as naive not naive as you as sharp you can think you are as you watch. We were off stage watching it. We got hooked. You look at those actors. You know, look at the actresses. And look at the, every one of them was a great great performer. Some had Oscars. Some were close to having Oscars. Others had other kind of. What so, was the most glamorous? I mean, other than what you've told me about Ava. Most glamorous. I think, uh, I don't know, not Ava, it's hard. I don't know. I really don't know. Who was, Who was the most glamorous of the men? Oh, Gable. Gable was a doll of all times. He tried to make my my, my wife. I got to punch him out. We're on location up in, uh, up in, well, up in the north woods somewhere. A picture called uh, "Across the Wide Missouri." I don't know if you ever remember that picture, but it had all people from from uh, MGM, all actors. We had 15 actors that are all big actors, but they're all. And we were setting up a shot, and I was walked by the camera. I look over, and Gable's got his arm around my wife. And I walked. I said, "Listen, pal, that's the you can deal. Step back." He laughed. <laughs> he was a don. I tell you, of all the men you want to, be, he was on on the ball. I tell you a story about him. In the in the business, his contract said at five o'clock he goes home. He comes in at nine, ready, and he goes home at five. And so this one day we're shooting a scene, and Mervin's the director, and it's getting closer. Not Mervin, yeah, I guess it was, it's getting closer to closer to five o'clock, and we're not finishing the scene where we have about six hundred extras, and that's a fortune to bring him back the next day. So the director says to me, "Go over and see if he'll do it do it for you." I said, "Me." <laughs> Go over, see what you try your magic. So I went over to see him. He's ready, right by the set, waiting for the to go on stage. I said, everybody called him King. I said, King, I, I don't know how to say this. He said, What's that? I said, I, I don't know. I, what would you? What, what I what? I said, Well, we're running late, and we're going to go past your time that you're supposed to go home, and the extras, and it's going to be a tough course for us, and I don't know. He said, well, I don't care about that. The hell, the extras got to work. I said, but, you know, for me, it, it would be good for me to have been able to pull this off with you. He says, well, would, I, would it work? I said, yeah. He said, all right, I'll tell you what you do. I'll work, but on the call sheet, put that I went home at 5 o'clock. Promise me he'll show that he was dismissed at 5, because you have to keep a record. I went back to the director. We played the scene, and 30 minutes later, he went home. And we got all the extras. That's the kind of guy I was. Uh, what about Tracy and Hepburn? Were they around? Uh, I, I, did, I didn't really know them. Uh, they were more aloof, you know, than I didn't see them much. They kind of stayed. They had their own They had their own little team. And they lived, you know, where they lived, they, were t they lived together, you know, in two different houses, I think it was, or in, 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 in I think, in, in Los Angeles. No, Beverly Hills somewhere. Yeah. But you didn't see them a lot of the uh -huh. How about Judy Garland? Well, the only experience I had with Judy, I was working uh, on a, a picture, and I was asked to get out of stage and stand by to help the crew of the, of the picture that we're doing, uh, you know, the, the big uh, Western, uh, uh, Annie, get your gun. And uh, they couldn't get her out of, the, out of her dressing room. You know, they said, you go down, knock on the door and get her out, because they had to make a, it was in the third or fourth week of the picture. 
and I knocked on the door, no answer, I knocked on the door, no answer, and I could not get her to open the door. L.B. Mayer came down on stage, and he said, somebody's get, get her out of there, you know, and they finally got one of the big executives, they got the door open, and she was out of it. She didn't know where the hell she was. And they had stood what happened with her all those weeks, they had nothing but problems. So they decided to fire her and start the picture over again. So. And they did with Betty Hutton. They, they got rid of him, Betty Hutton, yeah. And I, I rode a lot of horseback on that because we were, we, we were, all the extras were on the stage and we were riding horses, just like you keep horses in position because we shot from way high and all over the place. And So Judy Garland was pretty shot by the time you got She there. wasn't in great shape. How about Mayer? What was he like? Uh, L.B. Mayer, what was he like? He's a little little guy, a little fat guy that had a smile on his face and said good morning to me. <laughs> I never got really close to him, but he was Papa, you know. And then uh, he was he was a nice old man <laughs> for me. I was a young young guy. Yeah. Were you aware of of Mayer being behind a lot of the choosings of the, the stars? Or no, you know, I I was into what I was doing because I was gee, the, the chance to be in this major company. And my business was to get that picture made with the director and with the crew and, and do it in a manner that was everybody was secure and happy, you know.